Hello dear students welcome back to my channel Hilo Pharmacology in today's session let us learn about a very important topic under general pharmacology that is enzyme inhibition so the enzyme inhibition means here the one drug will inhibits the enzyme activity which is required for the metabolism of another drug so one drug inhibits the metabolism of another drug how means because of the enzyme inhibition so one drug will be inhibiting the enzyme activity which is required for the metabolism of another drug so what happens to this metabolism of another drug once the enzyme which is required for metabolism of this drug is inhibited so this drug concentration will increase so there will be increase in the circulating levels of this drug as well as there will be prolong pharmacological effects so because of the enzyme inhibition so the metabolic activity of one drug will be reduced or prevented which further leads to increase in the circulating levels of the drug as well as since there is no metabolism or breakdown of that drug their pharmacological effects will also be prolonged so the enzyme inhibition can be of two types so a drug can inhibit the hepatic microsomal mixed function oxidase that is mfos or it can inhibit a specific enzymes like xanthine oxidase monoamino oxidase and rda dehydrogenase so the enzyme inhibition is a very rapid process which can be reversible as well as at sometimes it can be irreversible also so to quote the example of irreversible inhibition so if you take an example of cicobarbital when cicobarbital is administered if the dose of cicobarbital increases so this cicobarbital as you know it inactivates the cytochrome p450 enzyme so by inactivating the cytochrome p450 enzyme it impairs its own metabolism please remember cicobarbital by inactivating the enzyme which is required for metabolism of its own drug it impairs its own metabolism leading to increase in the cicobarbital further leading to cicobarbital overdose and it can end up with the cicobarbital toxicity so this is the consequence of or the adverse consequence of enzyme inhibition so moving on to the next slide where we can clearly understand that so whenever there is a enzyme which is active so this enzyme uh, so take it as a particular enzyme is required for metabolism of drug 2 so this enzyme activity will helps in metabolism of this drug 2 so this is the concentration you can see of the drug 2 so once it gets metabolized by this enzyme so the concentration in the circulating plasma will be reduced so what happens the concentration will go down so after enzymatic action the concentration of drug 2 is reduced so if you introduce a drug 1 so here drug 1 is a enzyme inhibitor so it inhibits this enzyme activity so this enzyme is not having any activity on the drug 2 so the drug 2 metabolism is hindered or it is prevented so what happens the concentration remains same so after the enzyme inhibition the concentration of the drug 2 will remain same so that's why there will be increase in the circulating levels of the drug as well as there will be prolonged pharmacological effects so moving on to the consequences of enzyme inhibition so there are two consequences of enzyme inhibition one is enzyme inhibition can lead to potentially adverse consequences or it can lead to therapeutically beneficial consequences 
let us first see about potentially adverse consequences so here you can see that there are few drug when it is combined with en enzyme inhibitors their concentration will go high and it will lead to toxicity so first example is when you combine the theophylline with the chloramphenicol and the erythromycin so here the chloramphenicol and erythromycin are the enzyme inhibitors so therefore it can it will increase the theophylline concentration so once the theophylline concentration is increased it produces the side effects such as tremors nausea and vomiting so moving on to the second example when you combine a dicumerol with this semitidin here semitidin is a enzyme inhibitor which increases the concentration of the dicumerol which increases the risk of bleeding so when you combine morphine with the monoamino oxidase inhibitor so this monoamino oxidase inhibitor will is a enzyme inhibitor which prevents the morphine metabolism so therefore the morphine concentration will increase and as you know that morphine uh, can cause adverse effects like severe respiratory depression so when you combine phenytoin with the dicumerol or the chloramphenicol so what can happen is this chloramphenicol as well as dicumerol can inhibit the phenytoin metabolism and it increases the phenytoin concentration leading to adverse consequences of phenytoin such as ataxia and drowsiness so when you combine etorphinadin with the chloramphenicol or the ketoconazole so both chloramphenicol and ketoconazole are the enzyme inhibitor which increases the plasma levels of etorphinadin leading to cardiac arrhythmias so etorphinadin is a histamine blocker so please remember terfinadin can increase the risk of cardiac arrhythmia so these are the potential adverse consequences when you combine a drug inhibitors along with the drug which requires the same enzyme for its metabolism so next moving on to the therapeutically beneficial consequences as you can see that here the first example is when you combine a carbidopa with the levodopa which is used in the treatment of parkinsonism so when you use a carbidopa carbidopa if a is a peripheral decarboxylase inhibitor please remember carbidopa is a peripheral decarboxylase inhibitor so when if you give a l dopa alone it gets metabolized peripherally with the help of peripheral decarboxylase enzyme so to prevent the metabolism of the l dopa you are combining it with the carbidopa which is a peripheral decarboxylase inhibitor so it increases the concentration or accessibility of l dopa into the brain so therefore it can reduce the dose of the l dopa so second example there is aversion to alcohol so if you administer a disulfiram which is a aldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitor please remember disulfiram is used as a aversion therapy to alcohol disulfiram is a aldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitor where disul aldehyde dehydrogenase is required for conversion of the acetaldehyde to acetic acid which is very toxic in nature but this disulfiram being a aldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitor it prevents the conversion of acetaldehyde to acetic acid so what happens when you inhibit the aldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme activity the concentration of the acetaldehyde will increase and this accumulated acetaldehyde produces the adverse consequences like nausea vomiting and headache which is responsible for aversion to alcohol next moving on to the third beneficial consequence of the enzyme inhibition that is reversal of the skeletal muscle paralysis so if you are using a d tubocurarin which is skeletal muscle relaxants which are used during uh, operations so to reverse the skeletal muscle uh, relaxant activity or reverse the skeletal muscle paralysis which is caused by the d tubocurarin 
we will be using a neostigmin which is a acetylcholinesterase inhibitor so this neostigmin will increase the concentration of the acetylcholinesterase which is very much required for the breakdown or metabolism of the d tubocurarin so this was about the beneficial consequence of the enzyme inhibitors so this was all about the enzyme inhibition and the consequences of enzyme inhibition so if you find this video useful please do subscribe to my channel i love pharmacology and do not forget to share and hit the like button for more updates on interesting topics in pharmacology thank you have a good day